In this video, we're going to look at solving systems of equations using the Gauss-Jordan elimination method. In our example problem, we have x minus 3y plus 3z is equal to 7, x plus 2y minus z is equal to negative 2, and 3x plus 2y plus 4z is equal to 5. So the first thing we want to do is write it in the matrix, and we're going to use all of the coefficients. So we have 1, negative 3, 3, and 7, and then 1, 2, negative 1, and negative 2, and 3, 2, 4, and 5. And now we want to use our row operations to solve this. So remember, the idea is to first get a 1 in the upper left, and that becomes our first pivot row. And we're going to use this to create zeros in where this 1 is and where this 3 is. So I want to do negative 1 times r1 plus r2, and we're going to put that back in row 2. And then I'm going to write negative 3 times row 1 plus row 3, and we're going to put that in row 3. Remember, in order to create a 0, we need to multiply the pivot row by a number that makes it so when we add it to the other rows that we get zeros where we want them. So now we're going to have the first row doesn't change. In the second row, we're doing essentially row 2 minus row 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. 2 minus a negative 3 is 5. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. And negative 2 minus a 7 gives you negative 9. And for the second operation we have, we need to multiply the first row by negative 3 and then add it to row 3 and put it in row 3. So we have negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 3 gives us 0. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11. And then we have negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, plus 4 is negative 5. And negative 3 times 7 is negative 21, plus 5 is negative 16. So now we've successfully gotten our first one and our first two zeros. And now the next step is to get a one here where this five is. Because remember, we want ones down the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So in order to get a, f a one where this five is, I'm going to do one fifth times row two, and I'm going to put it back in row two. So we're going to have the first row doesn't change. And then we have 0 divided by 5 is 0, 5 divided by 5 is 1, negative 4 divided by 5 is negative 4 fifths, and negative 9 divided by 5 gives me negative 9 fifths. And then the third row doesn't change. And now that I have a 1 here, this becomes our pivot row. And we need to get a 0 here where this 11 is. We're working in a circle. We got the first one here, and then the two zeros. A 1 in the middle, and I want to get a 0 here. And then the next step will be getting a 1 in the far bottom right corner and getting my zeros above it. And lastly, we'll get this 0 up in the middle of row 1. So in order to get a 0 here where the 11 is, I need negative 11 times our pivot row, which is row 2 plus R3, and we're going to put that in row 3. So we have row 1 not changing, and row 2 is not changing, and then in row 3, we're going to have negative 11 times row 2, so negative 11 times 0 plus 0 gives me 0, 
negative 11 times 1 is negative 11 plus 11 is 0. Negative 11 times negative 4 fifths gives me 44 fifths plus negative 5, so that's going to give me a negative 25 fifths. So we have what we're left with is 19 fifths. And then if we do negative 11 times negative 9 fifths, we get 99 fifths. And then we're subtracting 16. And when we subtract 16, that's the same as 80 over 5, which is equal to 19 fifths. So we get another 19 fifths here. So now that we've gotten this 0, we want to create a 1 in our the last piece of our diagonal. So we're going to do 5 19 times row 3. And we're going to put it back in row 3. So rows 1 and 2 are not changing. And now we want to multiply row 3 by 5 19 So our two zeros are going to stay 0. 5 19 times 19 fifths is 1, and we get a 1 in the corner. So we can see that z is e equal to 1. And now we need to get zeros where negative 4 fifths is and where 3 is. So the next row operations we need, and remember this is our pivot row now. So we're going to have 4 fifths times row 3 plus row 2 and we're going to put that back in row 2 and then we're going to have negative 3 times row 3 plus row 1 and we're going to put that back in row 1 so we have 3 not changing so row 3 stays the same and now we need to do 4 fifths times row 3, so 0 times 4 fifths is 0, plus 0 still gives me 0. 4 fifths times 0 again is 0, plus 1. And 4 fifths times 1 plus negative 4 fifths gives me 0. And now I have 4 fifths times 1 is 4 fifths, minus 9 fifths is negative 5 fifths, or negative 1. And then in row 1, we're going to have negative 3 times row 3 plus row 1. So we have negative 3 times 0 is 0 plus 1. Negative 3 times 0 plus negative 3 still gives me negative 3. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 3 gives me 0. And then negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 7 is 4. So now we only have this one number left we need to make a 0. So we need to use the middle row. Row 2 is our pivot row. And we're going to do 3 times row 2 plus row 1. And we're going to put it back in row 1. And when we do that, we get rows 2 and 3 staying the same. And now we're going to do 3 times row 2. So 3 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. 3 times 1 is 3, minus 3 gives us 0. 0 times 3 is 0, plus 0 still gives us 0. And then we have 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, plus 4 gives us 1. So we have x, y, and z is equal to 1, negative 1, and 1. And that's how we use Gauss-Jordan elimination to solve a system of equations.